it's fun following Chris with what he just said. That was that was significant stuff that he noted uh, about his draft. Good morning, everyone. Paul, amazing new, uh, new location. This is tremendous. And you know, Amanda, you asked a very very good question, and I ran some math here on the computer after you asked that. So, remaining calendar days this year for Congress: fourteen days in May, twelve in June, eleven in July. One day in August, 13 days in September, zero days in October, eight days in November, 12 days in December. So if Rain Man is here in the crowd and can add all of those up before me, that comes to 71 total days. So 71 days left in the legislative calendar this year for Congress to cobble together spending bills, compromises, uh, more hearings, debate, and floor time for a massive comprehensive digital assets bill. And if anyone has seen today's headline in Politico, it is very big and it is very awesome and it's been pinging around Twitter. And I think the exact words were crypto's Capitol Hill comeback. So this morning, and it's talking about the bill that um, the stablecoin bill from Lummis and Gillibrand that, that Chris just went through. All of that to say though, these things, and I said this, I believe, at the, at the last BGP breakfast. Th th things start with an idea in Congress. When they go to committees, they turn into substantive legislative debates and actual weedy provisions of how language can affect an industry. When it leaves those committees, which a lot of these bills are now doing, it turns political, which means it gets thrown into a giant mixing bowl with completely unrelated priorities, with judicial nominations, presidential year politics. How does this affect a possible lame duck, duck session if Democrats lose the Senate, if Republicans win the House, if the president uh, gets defeated. So it all turns political, and this factors into a calculus that includes the White House, uh, congressional leadership, et cetera. And the one thing that we have our eyes on right now that has been lurking, we've talked about this in this setting before, is illicit finance and anti-money laundering and the prospect of a Treasury proposal being mm -hmm. enshrined into something that gets included in an omnibus crypto legislative package that would include the legislative stablecoin pieces that Chris just went through. It would include possibly an illicit finance component and any other things that have been swirling around in our discussions here or or otherwise. And and market structure, I guess, was the other big one that that I was that I was seeking to mention. Uh, Patrick McHenry's market structure bill designating a primary regulator at the CFTC. The SEC, what is the definition of a, of a crypto token? Is it a security, a commodity? All these things that you're familiar with. And last week was a significant moment because Wally Adiemo, the, the, the Deputy Treasury Secretary, testified in front of the Senate Banking Committee about a letter that he had sent the chairman of that committee on November 30th. And we're all sitting here thinking that letter came and went. It's six months later. They're not serious about illicit finance. But in the back of our minds, at least at Blockchain Association, we're like, there's no way that the... Senate Banking Committee Chairman is just going to put that letter on a shelf and not respond to it. And last week, Adi Amo came up and Brown teed up all of the right questions for him and Adi Amo responded and I'll, and I'll read some of them. Ransomware related payments rose from 1,200 in 2022 to 1,500 in 2023. The value going from 600 million to 1.6 billion. We can dispute all of those and, and, and call them embellished or exaggerated. Um, but this is what Treasury is seeing. And when Treasury says this to a congressional committee, they're pretty serious about it. Uh, the fear now that Iran, Russia, Hamas, and other groups cut off from the traditional financial sector are going to move to a crypto landscape where they have fewer tools, where we have fewer tools, and they have better abilities to move their money quickly. And the not being registered in America piece, he referenced Tether and other entities, is his illustration of saying, we need US touch points in order to regulate this industry or just at least oversee it safely. And he signaled for Congress that they need, they treasury need new authorities. He outlined them in his letter. And we responded to that letter by noting that illicit activity in digital assets accounts for, these are BA's numbers, uh, and we can cite them, 0.34% of all transactions. That was a decrease from 2022. And at our summit, at BA summit in November, the Deputy Treasury Secretary himself said many of the tools being created in the digital asset space are actually far better in terms of the ability for us to know your customer and to track where money is going. 
yet Treasury still wants to create a secondary sanctions regime to, to, uh, to target um, digital asset providers uh, overseas and to give OFAC, that's the Office of Foreign Assets Control at Treasury, more powers. All of that to say that if a stablecoin bill is going to move and there's optimism that we could land on language that is going to give all of us certainty and that are going to have that's going to have definitions that we don't think are draconian and that are inclusive and holistic if that moves and this gets into the political kind of level that i mentioned senate democrats are definitely going to have their priorities in there and senator gillibrand who is arguably or not arguably our biggest champion on the democratic side of the u.s senate is going to look out for things that could be harmful but Senator Brown is going to want to insert his AML priorities, those flow from that Treasury proposal. Elizabeth Warren will have his ear. John Tester, Robert Menendez, other senators that have spoken out, they will have his ear. And then, then it gets to the Senate Majority Leader and the House Speaker to look at all of this and figure out how can everybody get a piece of what they want to move this through. Patrick McHenry wants his legacy market structure bill. Their, their Senate Democrats will say, in, in, over my dead body is an industry-written bill going to come into the U.S. Senate and become something that we pass. But if that means that the illicit finance pieces that Senate Democrats want can also be enacted, that's where those compromises that happen in, in unmarked rooms in the U.S. Capitol, that's when that sort of conversation happens. Do we need to pair it with the safer banking provisions? Do we have to pair it with cannabis? Do we have to pair it with climb back executive compensation? These are things that Senate Democrats want. Will they swallow a Republican written House product or pieces of it? We're getting to that. We're getting to that time with fewer days left in the calendar and momentum behind all of these things moving. And then over here is Russia election issues and Israel and Palestine election issues. Those are being informed by digital asset wariness skepticism, all of it factors into this big 2024 bubble. So fun times. Uh, we have 71 days ahead, at least in Congress, and things will change. Thing, things will change. We'll get surprised again. But you're starting to hear, at least in our meetings on Capitol Hill, you're, you're starting to hear people tune in. Before it was, tell us about our indus your industry. It's not in front of my boss right now. I sure don't need to know this, but you got 30 minutes. Now it's, what's going on with that bill that was released yesterday? What happened in that treasury hearing? Those weren't asked before. And that's when you can see slow pieces of movement from disinterested or non-committee members um, in the House and Senate. So we will be reporting all of this back. Follow us, come to these breakfasts. We'll, we'll read it all out. And Paul, I think I can, I can leave it there. Why not? Yep, thanks, Chief. Okay. Anyone has any questions? I know we're moving fast. Just find me or reach out. Thank you. Appreciate it.